I was introduced to downsizing very early in my career. And I can remember the day when that happened, when they shut the whole Youngstown, Ohio district down. Uh, I remember grown men crying. And I knew then that I probably would never find a job that I loved as much as that one. That's basically what was instilled upon us, that you worked 30 years in this mill, you're set for life. I bought, I bought a house when I was 18 years old, so I was ready to go. This is a company, Thomas. You go look up north, you're going to make enough money here to go get a nice little place up north, have a cottage. We want you to be part of the American dream. We're going to help you. 17 months I was unemployed. Um, in that 17-month period, we had to live off of uh, money we had set aside that was supposed to be for retirement. I have spent all of my IRA this year. I can't pay my taxes. I do a part-time job working 20 hours a week. Uh, doesn't even pay the mortgage payment. That, that's coming from a 401k retirement money. I was unable to make my mortgage payments. The condo I'm living in will be auctioned off tomorrow. I eventually lost it, you know, so I'm renting a home and, uh, you know, I've separated from my family and uh, it's been a real struggle. I'm upset about it because I, I feel I worked all these years and now I don't have no medical insurance. I can't afford it. Insurance and the health part of it is, to me, is very scary. A friend of mine died not long ago because he didn't have health insurance. And he wound up in an ICU and they took his house for that and then when he needed a wound management clinic, they wouldn't admit him because he didn't have any money and he went home and the infection was so bad that he died from a heart attack at my age. I gave up health ins my health insurance, uh, my family's health insurance. And my kids help and I'm not used to that. That's really difficult. I think that's probably the hardest part of the whole thing. Our one daughter is still living in the house with us, helps us keep keep the mortgage payments and food and bills taken care of. My mother and I live together. She's 78 years old. She's going to be 79 this month and she works full time. I'm living with my father. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad we had a place to land. The tough part right now is I got two daughters that are getting, well I got one who wants to go to college next year. I don't know how she's going to pay for it. Where we had before planned on him going to college, uh, now he's uh, thinking more and more seriously about going into the military, so. Which is not a bad thing, but it's, uh, it's a recalculation from what he had originally thought his life would be like. Since uh, our opportunities came upon us after World War II, what are we leaving to our children? And the answer is not very much, and it's very concerning. We didn't grow up with scarcity like my parents' generation. And I think that's, that's major. And I think that's what this next generation is going to be dealing with. It seems like you need to be either very rich or very poor and not in the middle. 